you know, sort of corporate VC has become pretty mainstream as part of the, you know, the overall sort of venture venture marketplace. I think we did some uh, analysis from PitchBook, but last year, um, 2022, uh, 26% of all venture deals had a, a corporate investor involved. So, you know, at this point, um, you know, corporate venture is a meaningful part of the market. Uh, if you're an entrepreneur thinking about raising capital, you know, 26 percent of the, the the market, you know, it, you know, includes corporations. So, you know, it's a it's a place where you can access capital. Hey, everyone, this is Prashant and I'll be your host for the VC 10X podcast. And today we have Rich Grant with us. Rich is the founder and managing partner at Touchdown Ventures, a venture capital firm that partners with leading corporations to manage their corporate venture capital investment programs. In this episode, we talk about what are corporate VCs, how is corporate VC different from a typical VC firms, why big corporations start their own VC programs, how Touchdown helps corporations set up and manage their VC programs, why should founders keep corporate VCs on their target list, and lots more. So without wasting any time, let's dive straight in. Hey, it's so good to have you on the VC 10X podcast. How are you doing? Great, great. Thank you for having me, Prashant. Pleasure hosting you. Uh, so to start things off, can we have your story and how you started investing? Yeah, so I, I started my career out in investment banking, um, you know, out of undergrad, and then had a couple of different roles in, in corporate development, sort of strategy business development at, at Sony and then at Comcast. Um, and I think that was a really great background in terms of building out the skill set, you know, in terms of sourcing opportunities, deal making, diligence, um, you know, doing the, you know, sort of requisite analysis to make a decision on, you know, at that time it was an acquisition or partnership um, at times investments. And um, it also gave me a chance to really understand how corporations operate and, you know, large scale operations make decisions, which, you know, as we get into, you know, sort of what I'm doing today, you know, we'll was is obviously very invaluable in, in terms of uh, you know being able to do what we do today. But um, you know I was at Comcast at the time. This is 2009, 2010, and at the time Comcast and NBC decided to merge. And as part of that merger, um, there were a lot of groups internally that were obviously getting integrated and connected. Two of the groups that got connected were uh, Comcast and NBC's venture arms, which had been you know sort of long standing at the time. And so, you know, uh, lucky being in the right place at the right time, but uh, I was fortunate that when they merged those two groups, the first order of business was really to expand bigger platforms. So let's expand the team, let's expand the geographic footprint beyond Philadelphia and New York. And uh, I'm from the Bay Area, or I'm from California. My wife's from the Bay Area. We were looking to get back there from Philadelphia. And so I was very fortunate. I was given the opportunity to join the ventures team. Uh, move out to to San Francisco to help launch the office for kind of this newly formed Comcast Ventures. Um, and it was a great, you know, sort of opportunity for me, obviously, a great platform, Comcast, you know, and NBC, uh, one of the best regarded or most well regarded sort of groups out there in terms of corporate venture. And so it's just a great opportunity to learn um, in, a, in a scaled experience, um, access to deals, etc. And so um, that's, that's how I kind of, kind of got started. Yeah, that sounds great. And, uh, like what you do at touchdown VC is kind of interesting, wherein it's more like venture capital as a service for corporations, basically, uh, corporate VCs, right? So you are basically, uh, managing the venture capital programs for the corporations, right? It's VC as a service and that's a very interesting concept. Uh, so for our audience who is not very familiar, maybe, uh, with the corporate venture concept, can you give us an overview of uh, what is corporate venture capital and how is it different from regular venture capital firms? Yeah, I mean, I think corporate venture is it's it's you know in the name, right? It's when a corporation starts a venture fund, or you know maybe it's not a, a full fledged fund, but it's a program where the idea is this corporation is making minority investments, venture capital investments in you know startup companies. And, you know, there's a, a few different models to, you know, sort of how it works, you know, generally the most kind of straightforward down the fairway type model is, you know, a corporation effectively sort of uh, um, creates the equivalent of, you know, kind of a sole LP vehicle or, you know, where the, they're the only investor in this, 
you know, kind of fund or vehicle, and you're making investments in um, companies that are both, I think, strategically relevant to the organization, as well as they're sort of meeting your financial goals and and kind of risk tolerance. And um, we'll talk, I, I'm happy to talk a little bit more about how that kind of differs from, you know, sort of traditional venture, if that's, if that's helpful. Yeah, sure. Go on, go on. Yeah. So I think that the, you know, sort of the, you know, obviously we talked about sort of the structure, I think maybe the biggest, you know, sort of difference between sort of, you know, sort of corporate venture and, um, you know, sort of traditional institutional venture is just the, you know, kind of, it's a broader mandate. Um, the types of deals that you're looking at as a, as a corporation are generally, you know, they have to be both strategic and financial. Um, and as a result, that may change the way you sort of operate in, in certain circumstances, right? You know, sort of our approval of deals, we're going to be looking at things beyond just the, you know, sort of financial merits um, that may require that we have, you know, sort of sponsorship from executives internally. It may require that, um, you know, our investment committee might look a little bit different than a traditional investment committee where you have, you know, corporate executives that are sitting on that. Um, uh, it, it, it may change the way that you approach your investors, right? A traditional fund, you have uh, maybe a, a number of, you know, sort of limited partners that are investors and you're meeting with them quarterly potentially and just really focusing on the financial results. Whereas in corporate venture, you know, you, you might meet a lot more frequently and, you know, talk about, yes, the financial results, but also what are the learnings? What are the other uh, things that, that are other opportunities that are sort of bubbling up as a result of venture activity? It might be commercial opportunities. It might be M&A opportunities. Um, um, I also think there's, you know, sort of in, in terms of the way you operate, you, there's some, you know, potentially some differences. You know, for example, we like to talk about diligence. And, you know, when you're working with a corporation or at a corporation, you have access to, you know, potentially thousands of such subject matter experts. And so you're always going to do due diligence on an investment opportunity. You're always going to look at external diligence, talk to customers, talk to people who have, you know, worked at the company or worked with people at the company. But we have the unique opportunity to also just look inside our organization and tap into that expertise and do some proprietary diligence or you know, sort of internal diligence that would be harder for an external or traditional sort of institutional investor to do. Yeah, that's very interesting. And uh, one thing that just came to my mind is like, can, can there ever be an, a, a conf conflict of interest that since the corporate VC is maybe investing in companies that are somewhat in a related field, right? So can that can that ever come in come in the way that they are investing because they are interested maybe in the technology that the company is operating in or something like that, uh, which might go against that startup or that company's interest of maybe prote protecting that interest? Uh, does that kind of thing ever, ever happen? I mean, I think it I think it happens. It's really our job to sort of um, you know try to manage any of that uh, that concern and that sensitivity up front, right? So. I think when you're approaching a, a startup company, I think it's important to be transparent about, you know, what the program looks like. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, the, the most important thing that we have is our reputation, right? And so, you know, we want to approach that company um, with the best intentions, you know, be very clear about what we're, we're looking to accomplish um, and, and, and also be, you know, sort of very clear about you know, sort of how information is shared, what information is shared, you know, kind of broadly across the organization, yeah, because there's definitely going to be sensitivities. Um, and, and we do our very best, you know, sort of upfront to sort of mitigate any of those concerns. You know, obviously things change over time. Startups change their business model. They may, they may evolve and change what they're doing. Um, corporations change their strategy. And, you know, there, there could be situations where those things converge, there could be a situation where those diverge. And so it's something you, you're going to want to manage over time, you know, even post investment um, and take the appropriate, you know, sort of actions to make sure that you don't end up in a situation that people are uncomfortable with. And so, um, yeah, that's kind of how we we've, we've managed it. Um, but again, I mean, at the end of the day, it's all about our reputation, the reputation of our corporations, reputation of startups. And so you're just constantly actively, um, you know, thinking through that and, and, and managing potential concerns. Absolutely. Uh, okay, now, now that we understand what is 
corporate VC and how it kind of works. Uh, now let's focus on why should these big corporations start their venture capital programs? Like what's the incentive for them to, to yeah. do this? I mean, I think you're, you're seeing this across the board. Um, every corporation is focused on innovation and, and it's, uh, it's important that to use multiple different tools and approaches to innovation, you know, at, Every large company, for the most part, has an internal innovation effort where it's, you know, R&D or, you know, some of these, uh, you know, sort of newer models to, you know, sort of uh, innovate, innovate faster, or more leanly. Um, but but that's that's one, you know, sort of approach. A lot of companies also have external innovation efforts. And a lot of times those have been, you know, business development partnerships with with outside companies or or full out acquisitions and in, in, in sort of corporate development activities. Um, Corporate venture is a nice tool that kind of slots in as, you know, an external innovation tool where it, it allows you to, um, you know, sort of start a conversation with lots and lots of startups out there, right? Um, uh, capital, when you're investing capital, capital is the oxygen for these startups. So that attracts a lot of startups to at least have an initial conversation with you. Um, but we like to talk about venture capital as being not just purely for investment, but being a bit of a, you know, if you're familiar with the basketball reference of a point guard, we, we did a whole, uh, we did a whole uh, blog post on this, but you know, you, you attract a lot of these startups and have these uh, conversations. You have to think through what's the most appropriate path. Yes. Some of them are going to be appropriate for investment and we're going to want to invest, but in other cases, it may be more appropriate for a commercial partnership or maybe their later stage and it's closer to exit. And maybe they should be talking to the M and A team. Um, it can also be great context for for you know just understanding what's kind of going out in the market. And so, uh, you know, we like to say every conversation you might invest out of one out of every hundred companies you you talk to, um, but those other ninety nine are sources of value for a corporation, and you know really hard to tap into if you're not you know sort of utilizing venture capital. Um, and then just when you think about the venture capital model, what's interesting about it is, you know, a lot of those other efforts require the corporation really to provide all of the capital or all of the talent. And they have certain, you know, sort of incentive models that they typically, economic models they typically use to sort of incentivize talent. With venture capital, it enables you to use, uh, to tap into an external talent pool. You share the risk with other investors and entrepreneurs. You're sharing the capital requirements with other other investors. Um, you can utilize, you know, sort of uh, uh, equity in these startups and these projects effectively as an incentive model. And so it's a really interesting tool um, for a corporation to not only start these conversations, but um, you know, sort of test or have visibility in the market in a much different way than if they were just trying to launch themselves or go out and fully acquire a business. Right, absolutely. And at Touchdown, you are actually helping uh, these corporations manage their venture funds so they don't have to kind of do it in-house, right? Yeah. So uh, how, how does that work? So uh, how do you help these corporations run their venture capital programs? And since you have multiple of them, then how hectic does it get and how do you manage that? Yeah, so effectively, you know, sort of the, the, the premise behind Touchdown, when we started the firm, we, we, we thought there were probably you know, thousands, maybe 5,000 or more corporations out there that could uh, have the financial means to, would really benefit from and could bring a lot of value to the venture space. And, you know, we felt like there was an opportunity to sort of serve as a, a facilitator of that, right? And, and work with multiple corporations to help them, you know, first build out the strategy and figure out, you know, what they should be doing, how they should be doing it. Um, and then on an ongoing basis, help them you know, kind of manage those efforts. And, you know, what we do, we bring the, the VC muscle, right? We have a team of people. We have over 50 people now. Um, we've got a tremendous amount of experience. We've got, you know, sort of a process and a network of, of VCs and, and, and startup entrepreneurs. And so we bring that piece of it. Our corporations, they bring a lot of value too. They bring certainly capital, which is a necessary ingredient. It is venture capital, but um, but they bring their strategic needs and goals. They bring the ability to do these commercial relationships. As we talked about, they can support diligence. 
post investment, they have you know thousands of subject matter experts that can pretty much help a portfolio company with just about anything they could possibly think about. Uh, and so it's a really good sort of partnership or opportunity to kind of lock arms and, and work together. Um, you know, the first thing we do when we work with a corporation is we go through a setup phase where we're building out the strategy. We're sort of testing that strategy, making sure that, you know, sort of all of the different stakeholders of the organization, the executives, the business unit leaders, the folks that we would work with, you know, kind of a day-to-day -day basis are all kind of comfortable with that strategy. And then we really build out the, the infrastructure, the process, the messaging, um, so that, you know, we're ready to go and we're all singing from the same sheet when we go start talking to entrepreneurs and, and, and investors. And so usually that process um, takes, you know, two to four months. We're building out what we call an investment charter, which is really the playbook for, you know, how we want to manage and run the fund for the, you know, for the foreseeable future. And then we'll reassess whether or not that's the, the right playbook, you know, sort of for the different environments, you know, every kind of six to 12 months. And then, you know, once we go to the mark, go to market, um, we're really kind of in general quarterbacking the day-to-day -day process of venture. So we can run, you know, sort of the fun soup to nuts or the program soup to nuts, um, all the way from, you know, sourcing opportunities through, you know, diligence, managing those investments, post-investment and, and, and exiting, helping, you know, sort of find a home or, or IPO these companies. And so, um, that's really, you know, what we can do, but we, what we, we try to do is work very collaboratively with our corporate partners to figure out how do we most effectively bring them into the process, right? And, and so it's a very sort of back and forth collaborative process where we're meeting maybe two, three times a month, or we're making decisions together, we're walking through the deal flow together, um, determining which companies we should take into diligence, um, whether or not we should get some of those internal people involved in, in the diligence process, you know, who to get involved, how to get them involved, um, we, we form investment committees together so that we're making decisions again that kind of balance and and make sure that we're hitting both the financial and strategic you know sort of goals and 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 that's really how we do it. I would say there's you know uh, we we work with almost 20 different companies and you know we try to sort of streamline it. Like you said, it could could be hectic, but you know we try to streamline and, and leverage the best practices. But everyone's going to be just a, a little bit different, right? You know, every organization's a little different. Um, you know what they're comfortable with, and and you know, sort of, you know, how they operate is a little bit different. So we try to, you know, be flexible and and you know, sort of orient that around, you know, kind of the overarching best practices. Right. Uh, I'm when, wondering if uh, this is the uh, this is the way that most corporate VCs actually manage their funds. They outsource it or outsource it because uh, that's not their real thing that they do. They are like experts in something else, uh, venture capitalists, something else. So outsourcing makes a lot of sense. So is that what these corporate v VCs usually do or is this a new concept? Yeah. Well, I mean, I'd say one thing we don't like to talk about ourselves is outsourced, you know, because because the model is so collaborative and, and these are all, you know, these funds are all branded with the corporate branding or whatever sort of brand the corporation is intending. So it really is their their program we're helping to run and manage it. So, so I just want to clarify that. And, and then I would say that, you know, there's, there's many different kind of models, probably the most, the most common model is, you know, corporations, you know, sort of hiring their own team and, and trying to build this out themselves um, without, you know, sort of uh, outside party or venture capital as a service. Um, but what we've seen over, you know, really the last, you know, eight, nine years since we started the firm, is there's more and more kind of openness to working with groups like ourselves um, to help get these funds off the ground or these efforts off the ground and to manage them on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and, and, and so it's becoming more prevalent, uh, but, but it's, I wouldn't say it's the, the majority at, at this point. Right, absolutely. And uh, you uh, like manage corporate VCs uh, collaboratively with some of the like most reputable corporations. Uh, to name a few, which are also mentioned on your website, are Bentley, Kellogg's, T-Mobile, and several other very reputable corporations. So if you could, like, as a case study, tell us one of these corporations and how you kind of made that investment strategy for them that's best for them 
uh, best aligned to their interests, uh, that'd be great for our listeners. Yeah, no, happy to do that. So we talked a bit about the process, right? We have a, a setup phase where we're, we're working with the teams to sort of build out the strategy. But if you want to double click and think about, you know, how do we build that strategy, right? The first thing we do is we sit down with the leadership team, usually, you know, the you know, heads of strategy, corporate development, you know, some of the C-suite. And we really try to understand what are your goals for, for launching a venture fund? What are your innovation goals? What are your broader goals for the organization? Um, and, you know, there's, there's probably, you know, sort of eight to 10 different goals that just about every corporation, you know, is thinking about a subset of them. Is it, is it about growth? Is it about diversification? Are we trying to improve sort of operating performance and throughput margins? Um, do we have a platform business and we're trying to, you know, effectively make that platform more uh, resilient, you know, sort of in the, you know, sort of the go forward market? Um, or are we looking to just accelerate our roadmap through commercial deals? So we, we really sit down and we try to figure out, all right, what are the, what are the goals here? Um, the next step is really to sort of set KPIs and how are we going to measure our performance against whatever the goals are and, and, um, and, and making sure that we're going to track those, you know, sort of, uh, over the life of, of the fund. Um, and then with that in mind, we then go set the strategy and the, the strategy, there's, there's a number of different elements. Um, we wrote a blog post, you know, you know, probably seven or eight years ago at this point around the 14 points of strategy, the really big, you know, sort of three points of strategy are what sector or themes are you going to focus on? Um, what's the stage of investment, you know, all the way from sort of seed or early stage, all the way to late stage, you know, pre IPO, um, and, and what's the geography. And I, I think that, you know, you really have to be, you know, somewhat open, uh, around one of those, you know, sort of three things, otherwise you're going to be pretty constrained, but those are the, really the big three elements that we focus on. And then, you know, we think, we think through those and, and try to figure out some of the other key elements, such as, you know, what is the, the, the kind of equivalent of the fund size or the amount of capital we're going to deploy? What does the portfolio model look like in the pacing? Are we going to take board seats? Are we going to require uh, a commercial partnership ahead of time? It's, it all stems from whatever the strategy is um, and we, or whatever the goals are rather um, to build up that star strategy. And then um, another key element, I talked a bit about it earlier, is once you have a, you know, sort of draft strategy, you really want to pressure test that with some of the stakeholders and key executives of the company. And so we'll usually meet with 25, 30 people at the organization, try to understand what are their pain points? What are they, what are they looking for out of the venture fund? Um, we start to preview some of the, the strategy elements that we've, we've been thinking through and developing to get their perspective, because we want to make sure that if these folks are going to be involved in the fund or benefit from the fund in some way, shape or form, that we're, addressing some of the things that they care about and that we're we're not missing something or that they're going to support you know whatever we're we're sort of putting out there and and so that sometimes takes some finessing you know some conversations but it's a really important part of the process and um and, and we take it you know kind of very seriously as, as part of that kind of setup phase great so three things basically sector region and stage that's how you basically define the fund strategy of how they're going to be investing. Uh, and, and you mentioned a term called uh, diversification in, in that answer. Uh, and since uh, like corporate VCs are operating in one sector, is it most likely that their corporate VC fund is also most likely focused in that same sector, right? And if that is, then how do they think about diversification? Because what if that sector kind of falls in future, then what happens to diversification? Right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think, I think that every company, it, it sort of comes back to whatever the strategy is, right? And, and so, you know, depending on the strategy, you will define if you're investing, you know, closer to the core business today, or and, and trying to kind of accelerate the roadmap, or investing in, in, you know, sort of diverse spaces, you know, helping to build new businesses that might be you know, one or two steps away removed from, from the, the, uh, from the core business today. 
Um, we, we wrote an article or another blog post um, on, on kind of the horizons of innovation um, a few years ago, which you know, effectively horizon one is you know, sort of core, you're doing that today. Horizon two is, is more adjacent. So you might be starting something, but you're not necessarily operating and generating meaningful revenue from the business day. And, and you know, so horizon three would be you know, sort of further, we're more transformational or disruptive could be several years out, but it's a, you know, potential, you know, sort of area for exploration. And we did a little bit of work to look at, you know, sort of our corporate partners and, and, and how we're focused. And I think it came out to be, you know, roughly 40, 45% um, had an emphasis on the core, about 40, 45% had an emphasis on um, that, that sort of uh, tangential or horizon, horizon two type investment. And about, you know, sort of 10, 15% had more kind of exploratory transformational type in innovation in, in Horizon 3 as, as a focus. And, and that to me, you know, sort of feels like a good place to start, you know, um, it, but again, every company is different. If your goal is to build, you know, sort of a value for your, your platform, you might invest in a lot of things, you know, that are very different from your core business, as long as they leverage your platform. Um, if you're looking to diversify because your industry is under pressure or you have a you know very large market share in a space, then you might invest again way outside the core. And so there's just it just depends on that the, the, the goals ultimately. Right, uh, and I think one important aspect of uh, VC corporate funds is this the concept of hedging basically that if our corporation might be phased out tomorrow, then in that case, what is the kind of company? that comes to replace it and can we get in that company and become an investor in that company today right so, so i think this is a great hedge and this is might be a like great reason why corporates should start vc firms uh, right because we see that the, there are these all these big corporations but they still get disrupted right by newer startups and just to like take an example I, i'm not sure if this is the perfect example but we have Google, have had Google for all, all this time. No, nobody thought that it's ever going to get disrupted. But suddenly, like AI has come into picture. There is OpenAI, a different company, a newer company, which even if 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 it's challenging one percent of what Google does, then I think it's doing something right. And if Google had a corporate VC program and thought about uh, which company can potentially replace us tomorrow and invest in that then that'd be great for them today, right? And I think Microsoft did that, uh, exactly that, right? Because they are investors in uh, OpenAI, and yeah. that's like coming to fr fruition for them today, right? Yeah, no, I think that, you know, you're always thinking about, um, and, and venture capital is, again, it's part of, you know, sort of your innovation, you know, sort of roadmap and one of the tools there. And so you're always thinking about, all right, are there companies out there that can help advance our, you know, sort of, you know, existing products? Are there areas that we want to, you know, move into for whatever reason, because, you know, either the core is, is, you know, there's not as much growth opportunity in the core, or we see a natural sort of expansion opportunity uh, into those other areas. And so, yeah, I, I think that, you know, every corporation, certainly that's doing venture is kind of thinking along those lines of, you know, how, how do we leverage or use this, this tool of corporate venture to kind of align with other, with companies um, that could, you know, sort of help us in some way and that we can also, you know, sort of help it advance and, and, and grow, you know, at a different pace than they would without, you know, kind of our help. Yeah, absolutely. And talking about the founder aspect, so a founder has an option to pitch any kind of VC, they don't, necessarily care if it's a corporate VC or a regular VC. Uh, but what, what do you think can be the additional uh, benefits of pitching to a corporate VC for a founder? Yeah, I mean, at, at this point, you know, sort of corporate VC has become pretty mainstream as part of the, you know, the overall sort of venture venture marketplace. I think we did some uh, analysis from PitchBook, but last year, um, 2022, uh, twenty six percent of all venture deals had a, a corporate investor involved. So, you know, at this point, um, you know, corporate venture is a meaningful part of the market. 
uh, if you're an entrepreneur thinking about raising capital, you know, twenty six percent of the, the the market, you know, it, you know, includes corporations. So you know, it's a it's a place where you can access capital. That's you know, sort of you know, number one. Um, you know, number two, I think that we've talked a lot about what corporations get out of um, you know, sort of these the you know, the corporate venture. Uh, but the startups can get a lot of value from engaging with and working with corporations. Uh, there's the potential to have a commercial partnership or some sort of strategic partnership, whether it's around distribution or a big customer or, you know, you know, whatever, you know, sort of shape it takes development. There's an opportunity to kind of work together commercially. Um, we had said that there's corporations have all of these subject matter experts, you know, thousands and thousands of people that work at these big companies. And they know their, you know, sort of function or their area really, really well. And it's helpful for us on a diligent, from a diligence point of view. But for those startups, if you become part of the, the, the you know, sort of our portfolio, now you have access to that subject matter expertise. And so when you have questions, when you have stumbling blocks or things that you're trying to get, get through, um, you can tap into that expertise and it can be really, really valuable. And, um, you know, I, I think another thing that, you know, you, you, you talk about, or you think about is, you know, every startup, you know, for the most part it, is also, you know, down the line thinking about how are they going to exit, you know, or, or is this going to be a, an IPO? Is this going to be a, 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 you know, sort of an acquisition by a larger corporation? And so if a company, you could see them being a natural acquirer for your business, just using venture capital as a way to engage with that company, get to know them. They may or may not invest at that time, um, but it, it's a good way to start to get on their radar and start to build those relationships. Because a lot of times, you know, M and A's don't just happen overnight either, right? It's a it's a building of a relationship. An investment can sort of help, you know, sort of jumpstart that. But even just starting to have conversations, you know, sort of at the very early stage, gets you on the radar and sort of primes the pump for for that potential opportunity down the road. Absolutely. Yeah. Those, those are a good set of reasons why founders should pitch corporate VCs and why they should be very much on your radar. Right. Uh, all right. So with that, we have come to the end of our main questions. Uh, thank you so much for coming on. And my last closing questions would be, uh, where can corporates reach out if they are interested to work with you to help them manage their VC programs? And the next is where can founders check out uh, the kind of operations that are working with you and maybe pitch their startups? Yeah, so, I mean, I, I think our the best place to start is our website, touchdownvc.com. Um, and all of our, you know, sort of contact information is available there. You can also see what are our, you know, kind of current focus areas, what are, you know, uh, you know the company, who are the companies that we're working with today? So that's a great place to start. I've also referenced a lot of the content that we've created over the years. We've, we've, we've created a pretty huge, you know, sort of repository at this point of, um, of blog posts and sort of content on the corporate venture space. That's uh, on Medium. Risky Business is our, our handle. You can also access that through, um, through our website. But, but uh, I think those are really the two kind of best places to learn a bit more about us and, and what we do and, and get in touch. Absolutely. And where can our listeners follow you? So, you know, again, my, my contact information is, is, is there on the website. Um, LinkedIn is probably the, you know, sort of the, uh, the social media, um, you know, platform that, that I use the most. Um, so that's probably the best, uh, best place to, to, to sort of follow me. I do have, you know, sort of Twitter and such, but, but maybe a little bit less active there. All right. I'll make sure to put all those links that you mentioned in the show notes uh, below so that our listeners can get there easily. Thanks so much for coming on, Rich. It was a pleasure talking to you and wish you luck with managing these VC funds for all these big corporates. Thank you, Prashant. Thank you.